I felt a lot of loss. We have to honor what those feelings are. When we explore why are you angry, often underneath it, there's some sort of unresolved grief. There's been a disrespect or a boundary not being honored or a hurt having happened. Because the truth is we don't know how someone else actually feels. I didn't even know that grief recovery specialists existed. Do you want to tell us? So if other women are feeling this way, what would you tell them? That you're not alone. And we're not alone, but we feel alone because we've lost connection with ourselves to explore why we have the feelings versus just ignoring them, disregarding them, numbing them. Like we just don't feel content. We don't feel satisfied. We don't feel fulfilled. What makes you feel beautiful? Feeling strong and healthy in my body makes me feel beautiful. I want to thank you for watching our show. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share so we can continue to bring excellent content for you. Today, I want to introduce Kirsten Fry. She is the owner of TLC Life Coaching. She is an advanced, certified grief recovery specialist. Now, uh, it's no secret. I said that when I went through menopause, perimenopause, I felt a lot of loss. I wasn't even sure what that loss meant. Was it the loss of my femininity, loss of my period, loss of my old self? And with loss comes grief. And that's why we're here today with Kirsten to explore grief in the context of midlife and perimenopause. Kirsten, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm really delighted to be here with you today. So I didn't even know that grief recovery specialists existed. Do you want to tell us? Because I'm sure a lot of people don't know that's available to them. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you're asking the question because up until a few years ago, until I went through the grief recovery method myself, I didn't even know that it was a thing. So I think most people recognize that maybe when they need uh, assistance moving through difficult times in their life, challenges, transitions, changes, losses, typically we tend to think about therapy and counseling, which are magnificent avenues for us to go down. Um, but what I found is that I ended up going to see a grief recovery method specialist myself. And so what I found is she guided me through a difficult time that I was moving through. And for me, it just resonated so strongly. It was exactly what I needed, not just personally, but also professionally. And so Grief Recovery Method is an evidence-based educational program. So it's not therapy or counseling. So I always make sure that people understand that I am a certified coach. I am not a therapist or a counselor, but I am a transformational life coach that specializes in grief recovery. And uh, this program is the foundation of me helping people move through their own transitions, changes, and losses in life. Why don't we define grief? Because you yeah. alluded to, you know, we prepare for funerals and the actions, and perhaps that's how most of us are familiar with the concept of grief, but let's define it. It's perfect because that's exactly what I find. Most people still don't really understand what I do, which is why I love this program because it allows me to also educate people on grief and loss because the truth is loss is universal. So if you're a human being, you're going to be moving through loss many, many times in your life. Uh, there are more than 40 different losses that can occur in someone's life. So not just death or divorce, which is what typically people tend to attribute grief to. Um, so while we are all going to go through this universal experience of loss, grief is unique to us. So we move through our losses uniquely because our relationships to those people, places, and things are unique to us. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it can be very difficult to understand when somebody's moving through um, a grieving experience because we know how we felt at the time that we moved through a loss. But again, our grief is unique. So for example, if you lost your mother and I lost mine, but your relationship with your mother was very close and loving and connected, and mine was what I call a less than loving relationship, more distant and not as connected, well, yes, we've had the similar experience of losing our mothers, but your grief is going to be very different experience than mine would be. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have to be careful, I think, when we say things like, I, I know how you feel. Yes. 
Because yes. the truth is we don't know how someone else actually feels. And that would definitely apply to midlife. I mean, we, everybody, we can't escape aging <laughs> and menopause, but how we experience it is unique. So maybe we let's relate some of some examples of loss because there's, you know, there's uh, losing career, losing self, femininity. Those are some of my examples. But do you want to walk us through some yes, additional you just, ones? You just named several just from the menopause experience that we move through, right? Where all of that and more can come from that. In terms of life experiences, loss of job, loss of health, loss of financial status. Uh, miscarriage, right? empty nesting, even positive things like retirement and getting married and having children can also be a loss experience and people are confused by that. But it's any time, I think it's because we don't actually have proper definitions of what grief actually is. So I think everybody understands that grief is the normal and natural reaction we have to a loss of any kind. And I think we all can uh, agree to that. But grief is also about all the conflicting emotions that we have when there's an end of or a change in our familiar patterns of behavior. So really, I mean, there's more than 40 different life experiences that we can have. So even things like menopause, which some women might look forward to because now we don't have to worry about a monthly period and, you know, you can go on vacation and not have to be tracking when <laughs> that's going to happen for you. Um, and there's a sense of freedom around that and um, not having to deal with that. But then there's all these other losses in terms of um, just exactly those things that you mentioned, maybe feeling like there's a loss of femininity. And even though maybe you weren't planning to have more children, the fact that you actually cannot now is a loss because it's something that you don't think about until you're actually in that experience. So yeah, there's many, many different losses that we can experience. And that's why that second definition of conflict, grief isn't just acute sadness, it's all the conflicting emotions that we have. So typically like anger, resentment, bitterness, frustration, mm -hmm. anxiety, you know, guilt, shame, you know, the big heavy ones that sit with us like anchors, those are the ones that tend to have a life limiting um, effect on our capacity for happiness moving forward in life. And because that can be life limiting, how about we explore how to recognize it? Because we don't even necessarily recognize. Mm -hmm. I think grief. that definition is so helpful, which is why I appreciate yeah. you asking the question. Because again, if we're only attributing grief to acute sadness, which is usually death or divorce, then that's people are feeling emotions and not even recognizing that this is grief. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll use anger as a great example of this. And anger for a lot of people is a powerful emotion when it comes over us. But I call anger grief's bodyguard because always when I sit with people who are expressing anger, which is a normal and honest human emotion, like we have this huge range of human emotions. And so we have to honor what those feelings are. But when we explore what's, why are you angry? Often underneath it, there's some sort of unresolved grief where there's been a disrespect or a boundary not being honored or um, a hurt being, having happened. So it's really important to explore why we have the feelings versus just ignoring them, disregarding them, numbing them, uh, doing all the things that we do, I call it our silly human tricks that we do to avoid these sort of uncomfortable or painful emotions that we have. But we need to be really careful with that because you have to move through these emotions. If we just try to disregard them or bury them or deny them or numb them out, which is what a lot of us do, and it's easy to do in our society uh, these days, mm -hmm. they will leak out at some point. And that'll leak out in our health primarily. Uh, in our finances, in our relationships with other people. So it's very important that we actually honor our emotions and not intellectualize all these things that are happening to us and for us. That is um, easier said than done, I would say. Yes. Because we're used to coming from our head and we're not used to coming from our heart. So we're out of practice and a lot of us are very disconnected because we've been busy, which is again, one of the myths around grief. 
And it's only when we have typically a significant life experience or life event like menopause where everything changes, uh, how you feel in your body. You know, maybe you have uh, a daughter that's moving through puberty at the same time as you're moving through menopause um, or you're empty nesting at the same time. Or maybe you have the parents that are um, unwell and they're moving through their change of life um, experiences that are happening. So all of a sudden it becomes very overwhelming um, and really sort of bottoms us out. And it's in those moments that the facades and the intellect and everything else falls away because it doesn't work anymore. And, you know, people talk about the breakdown. Uh -huh. um, it's unfortunate that we feel that we have to get to that space before we give ourselves the love, care, compassion, and support that we need to move through those very challenging human experiences that we're all moving through. So it's so fascinating to me that we're all moving through these different experiences at different times, but yet we feel so isolated and lonely moving through them. Yeah, often. and almost, um, not shameful, but I mean, I'll say it. I, uh, I've i cried by myself, in the, I'm going to cry now, in the shower, so no one hears me. You know, and you're like, why am I crying? This midlife thing, why am I crying? You don't even know why. So if other women are feeling this way, what would you tell them? That you're not alone. And you, you know, bringing this podcast to everybody that they can sit here and have these feelings and be like, oh my gosh, I feel like that too. Like my head's tingling right now, which is my validation. Like it's so powerful right now. And we're not alone, but we feel we're wrong because we've lost connection with ourselves. With like when we ask ourselves, like, why am I crying? Well, when was the last time you sat down and really tapped into how you feel with what's happening with you? We just carry on. We move on because there's things that need to be done and people to be taken care of and jobs to go to and all the things that we do, which we can do because we can adapt and we're resilient. But at the end of the day, when we're crying in the shower by ourselves, what we need to, that's a, that our body in its wisdom is giving us an indication. It's like there's something for you here. There's something for you to discover. There's something for you to heal here. There's a boundary maybe that needs to be explored. Right. Let's make sure we will put uh, some resources in the description of our YouTube episode for anyone who wants to explore grief recovery, um, because I, I think that I wish I knew about this <laughs> before. So tell us a little bit more about the actual program of grief recovery. Perfect. So what I always do is I already I always start off with a discovery call because it's important. I know the. I know what's required to move through the program, having done it myself many times. So it's making sure that this is the right time and the right tool for someone to move through. So I always have a, a conversation with people first to see where they are and what's happening uh, for them at that time. If they decide to move forward with the program, it's a, I work one-on-one -on -one and I can do that either in person or online. And it's a seven-week program. The sessions are usually 60 to 90 minutes. There's uh, an additional one to two hours of homework per week uh, to move through it. And at the end of the program, you have these lifelong tools that you can take with you that you can utilize at any point in your life. And not only that, what I love about this is that you'll learn more about grief than 90% of the population knows, which means you will be able to be a better support and a, what we call a heart with ears for the people in your life when they move through their own grieving experiences. It's interesting that you say that you went through that, the grief recovery coaching yourself. Are you comfortable sharing with our audience what led you to become a grief recovery specialist? Absolutely. I think our stories are powerful and that when we share, it helps us come together and also connect because often I feel like when we move through something significant in our lives, Often we feel isolated or alone. And so I find sharing stories is really, really important. Um, so I came through grief recovery through a very convoluted way. Uh, at 48, I discovered that I was adopted and this had been a huge family secret. And so at the time that I found out, both my parents had died. So it was this very interesting circumstance where I found out this information. And for me, it was like my whole world got shifted. So I had grown up with parents who were, you know, we had everything that we needed and what we wanted, 
but my parents were both emotionally distant, which had been difficult for me growing up. I didn't have the same connection with my mom that a lot of my girlfriends did growing up. And while that was painful for me at the time, as I went through my teenage years, I adapted and became very resilient. And then things like friends became far more important for me and then just became very independent in my life and moved out at an early age. So finding out that I was adopted intellectually made a lot of sense and helped explain some of these things that had happened earlier in my life. But on an emotional level, it brought back everything that I thought I had already dealt with in therapy mm. about my parents. And it was this whole sense for me of being lied to my whole life in terms of who I was and where I came from uh, and lied by omission. So that's where secrets can be really difficult for people um, in families. I find it really keeps us disconnected and it keeps us from the love, care and support that we need as we go through. And that was one of the things I was really resentful. Uh, we had a small family and that this news and my mom had sworn the entire family to secrecy. Otherwise, they wouldn't be allowed to have a relationship with my brother and I. And so it really kept everybody sort of on tenterhooks. Everybody was very careful about what they said. And I felt that when I was younger, but didn't understand mm -hmm. why that was happening. So I resented the fact that we lost our possibility of being a really connected, loving family because of this secret. And it also um, exacerbated a feeling that I had growing up of feeling like I didn't belong in some weird way. And so I had to go through this process and it kind of shook me for a period of time. And, uh, you know, I did what we normally do with a big change or a loss or a grief that we have moving through this was I intellectualized it. So I went through the whole thing of what it meant. I mean, it was in my late 40s when this was going on. I had already built a life and a family that I was very happy with. So I took some time and had some feelings around all of that and then just made the decision that I wasn't going to look for my biological family. I didn't feel the need to do that and kind of went on with my life after a few weeks of this, or so I thought. But what had happened with this news of the uh, adoption was that it was a loss on top of many other losses I had had in my life that were unresolved that I thought I had dealt with, which I had intellectually, but not emotionally. And so what I found was a year and a half later, I was starting to have physical manifestations. I was having anxiety for the first time in my life, which I had never had before, even as a police officer. I was having heart palpitations that couldn't be explained through a doctor or anything else like that. It was very healthy. Um, and so I had met a woman at a networking event who was a grief recovery method specialist. And I contacted her and we had a discussion and she's like, yeah, you're ready to do this work. And I did a deep dive in grief recovery, all these unresolved losses that I had in my life. That's a lot. Thank you for, for sharing. I'm, I'm curious about so many things. Let's start with what makes grief recovery unique in its approach, uh, me recovery method, compared to, say, therapy or counseling. Oh, I love it. I, I like to use it as not an either or, but as um, something to consider in addition to, because I've had clients that are in therapy and also do the grief mm -hmm. recovery method. And actually doing the program can actually open up their um, sessions with their therapist opens up things that maybe they weren't even aware of or weren't consciously mm -hmm. aware of that really opens up things that really allows the therapist to get in because I'm very aware of what my scope of practice is. And so I'm very conscious of making sure that people receive the assistance and the guidance that they need. But what I love about grief recovery is, or uh, in addition to either therapy, counseling, or support groups, is that it's an educational program with tools that you can use with any kind of loss that you have in your life. And so not only did I use those tools when I went through the program with my specialist, but now that I offer it as a specialist myself, I use those tools consistently and still do to this day, including this year, as I'm moving through another major transition in my life. So the tools are something that you can take throughout the rest of your life 
which isn't always the case with like support groups and things where it allows people to express their feelings, which is super important. A lot mm-hmm. of us have never learned how to actually do that. But you need action steps to help you move through these changes, transitions, and losses that you move through in life. And it's, it's this program that teaches people how to take these action steps that will help them move through their grieving experiences. Okay. And I'm sure we'll come back to some specific examples from your, your, your coaching um, practice. I want to go back to, you, you mentioned intellectualizing loss. So that's really interesting. I don't know if it's just a Gen X thing or if it's, it's just something we do in life because we're taught to do that, right? It's, it's okay to intellectualize and put it in a box and move on. So tell us more about that. Such a good question (laughs) because we all tend to do it because what we find about with grief is that there's misinformation or these myths around grief. And we'll talk about that at a later time. But what we tend to do is that we've learned how to deal with grief because I don't know about you, but my parents never sat me down at the kitchen table and talked to me about grief and loss and what to do when we have these emotions mm-hmm. that come up when we lose something really valuable and important for us. That never, those conversations never happened in my household. So we learn from young children growing up how our parents dealt with grief and loss. We start to have our own experiences and we kind of walk our way through it. And what's amazing about us as human beings is that we're adaptable and we're extremely resilient. So adapting, in my mind, is very much the figuring it all out. So it's the intellectualization of the things that, okay, you know, will take a loss in terms of someone's death, for example. Well, you know, they were suffering if they were going through a disease process or they were older. And so we try to make sense of this thing that is like difficult to make sense of. So we intellectualize the loss and we adapt to it. And the, adapt- the adaptation is the intellectualization and also the physical piece of it in terms of doing all the things that need to be done when something like that happens. So planning the funeral, getting the house cleaned out, you know, mm-hmm. arranging the closets and so on and so forth. And so we get caught up in the doing and the intellectualization of it, but we forget about the heart component and about the healing. And we forget that adapting and healing are not the same thing. I want to explore intellectualization of grief a little deeper, recognizing it, the physical manifestation of that. You talked about anxiety, but are there more signs that could help us recognize? Yes. So... When you're moving through grief, oftentimes the physical manifestations can be very similar to what people are going through in menopause. So it's Mm -hmm. easy how they actually overlap is there can be a change in your um, fatigue levels. Anyone that's gone through sort of an acute loss knows that you're exhausted because it's emotional Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things that are moving through there. So there's there's fatigue. There can be a loss of appetite. Um, there can be uh, an uptake of either anxiety or depression, all of which are normal reactions to the grieving experience. Um, sometimes if we ignore what that grief is, like for me, that it became a physical manifestation of like heart palpitations and um, not sleeping well at night. That's a huge one, also huge during menopause. Yeah. So the confusion is, is it just menopause or is it grief or is it both? And that they all actually intertwine. And so the physicality is a really, really important piece of that. Yeah, for sure. And I think that it's fascinating because we want to medicalize everything. So if I'm feeling this way, you know, I want a medication for it or, but the answer is you need so many things. Like this grief recovery is something that we probably aren't considering in our midlife journey. Uh, and worth exploring beyond medicines. I think it's important to utilize everything that we could, right? So for example, when I was starting to feel this anxiety and heart palpitations, that scared me because I had never felt heart palpitations before. And I was a personal trainer and a holistic nutritionist. So I knew my body well and it didn't feel like me. So I made sure I went to the doctor and we did the testing and made sure there was nothing physically wrong with me 
And then, um, then it was finding out those other resources, right? And I was just very fortunate to find Tammy, which was, who was my great recovery method specialist. Um, so it's like use everything, right? So, you know, maybe checking in with your doctor, your naturopath, you know, whoever you've decided to use as your physical um, health team to help you move through menopause, which we should be doing. It's, you need assistance <laughs> yeah. through this, right? And again, everybody's going to go through menopause uniquely, as well as going through grief uniquely. So your tools might be different from my tools, whether that's on a physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual level. So I think we have to explore all of those things. As many tools in the kit as possible. 100%. I find it fascinating that you were a police officer uh, as you were discovering that you were an adopted child. Did your day job uh, factor into how you were processing your emotions? Well, it's interesting you mentioned that because actually I had moved out of policing at that time and it was actually a personal trainer and a holistic nutritionist at the time that I found out this news. But I had been in policing as a police officer for 18 years. So, of course, you're seeing a lot mm -hmm. in, a, in a career like that. Um, I had no idea about grief, specifically uh, grief recovery uh, at that time. Of course, we debrief when we go to these, um, you know, crisis type situations. You are dealing with people in the moment of a tremendous loss oftentimes. Um, but we would be the ones coming on scene sort of immediately and not doing the follow-up work or care, uh, which again, why it was so surprising when I found grief recovery, because as a police officer, we're very aware of all the services that are available to people and can recommend those things to them while they're going through it. And I had never heard of grief recovery. And yet this program has been around for over 40 years. Yeah, I certainly never heard of it. And I, I'm sure I could have benefited from it myself. And and so could others. Uh, you know that we'd like to end our interview with a question that is, what makes you feel beautiful? Such a great question. And I had to really give this some thought, which was surprising for me because I really had to tap in and figure out what makes me feel beautiful because I don't even remember the last time I asked myself that question. And I would say feeling strong and healthy in my body makes me feel beautiful. Feeling calm and centered in my mind makes me feel beautiful. And feeling connected and expanded in my heart makes me feel beautiful. Well, I feel the connection, and through those beautiful eyes of yours, I, I want to thank you for sharing with our community, and we will certainly welcome you back to this time of the month. Thank you. You know when you walk into a hotel and there's this beautiful scent? It's not intrusive, but it just elevates the whole mood. Don't you wish you could take that home with you? Well, in fact, you can with this awesome home diffuser by Hotel Collection. What I absolutely love about this is that it's pet friendly, very important because I have two pets, and you can control the intensity with a remote control. The other thing I love about this is you can actually pick your favorite hotel scent. So if you want your house to smell like your favorite hotel and bring you back to that vacation mode, Hotel Collection Home Diffuser is for you.